with the 32nd pick in the 2022 NBA Draft, the Orlando Magic select Caleb Houston from Mississauga, Ontario, and the University of Michigan. Mm. All right, we talked an awful lot about that. Where are the Michigan players going to be drafted? Days of Blue Review. That was uh, Mark Tatum, the NBA Deputy Commissioner on ESPN, last night making the announcement. Uh, Houston at the very top of the second round, well, second pick of the second round, and then a little bit later, Musa Diabati. Uh, welcome in on this Friday, Days of Blue Review, wherever you're watching or listening after the fact, or if you're here live. It's good to have you on. You know, part of me thinks that I should be sitting here telling everybody uh, what I think about the Supreme Court ruling today. I don't really understand why they came down uh, today uh, with this decision to take away women's rights. But I, I do know that in the days and weeks and months and years ahead, we will be talking about whether we trace back and say it was actually June 24th, uh, 2022, or we just say, Ed, yeah, you remember the summer of 2022 when this happened? But it will be something that will be uh, uh, definitely be top of mind and discussed over and over and over again uh, here uh, across the country. Uh, we make the transition. It's a very helpless feeling. I'm sorry, but you know, it felt like I needed to at least say something. My mind's racing on, uh, on the whole thing. But you know, part of what we do, we do make the transition. We try to. Uh, you know, act professional, make the transition. And that's what I'm trying to do uh, right now. If you're somebody that uh, is finding us for the first time, wherever you're at, uh, I'm Dennis Fithian, and this is Maze and Blue Reviews, Michigan football today, Michigan today, sometimes Michigan basketball today. Uh, we are live weekdays at one o'clock talking about the latest in Michigan sports. And that's what we're going to be doing today. It's going to be fun times, uh, Maze and Blue Review. We do have a variety of ways for you to join the show. If you want to use the feedback, I put the feedback up on the screen. And in real time, I read your comments. I answer your questions. And it's a fun part of the show. We always get people uh, leaving their feedback. And and then, you know, we're able to discuss it that way. We also have a call-in number, 810-666-1574. That's 810-666-1574. You can call in the show. That's nice. What are we going to be talking about uh, today? Well, you can probably guess, but I won't have you guess. I won't leave you in the lurches that long. We are going to talk about the NBA draft. That took place last night, and you heard the deputy commissioner announcing one of the Michigan players, Caleb Houston, uh, last night. I will take it on from a Michigan standpoint and a Detroit Pistons standpoint coming up. In about 10 minutes, but we will start with Michigan football recruiting because there is some news, some rumblings with Michigan football recruiting. And we knew we were going to get here one of these days. And uh, here we are. You know, yesterday we had Arch Manning making his commitment to Texas. So then all eyes uh, turned and, and all eyes and ears have been on uh, Dante Moore out of Detroit. But there is now this feeling that Moore is trending elsewhere and that Dante Moore will not be wearing the maize and blue and that Dante Moore is going to go green and he is going to go to the great Northwest and he is going to play for the Ducks of Oregon where he is expected to visit this weekend ahead of the Elite 11 camp, which is out in California now, you never say never, you know, when it gets down to recruiting, but, and just because it looks like it's, it's walking like a duck, it's sounding like a duck, it's quacking like a duck. So it's probably a duck, but un until you get that official word, you know, Michigan uh, trying to do what they can to see if they can, you know, get Dante to come at least to Ann Arbor and maybe listen to a final, final, final pitch or whatever else. But like I said, uh, people that like, I don't know, Josh Henschke is our, our publisher and, you know, every day, if, if it's not, it's more than every day. <laughs> it's, and lately it's been, it seems uh, every hour he's had uh, another update about Dante Moore and it's walking and it's quacking and it's, you know, really sounding like a, a duck right now. So it's not 100% over. And for people and people that are watching this that are Michigan fans, most of you are 
recruiting fans. And I just got to tell you for a lot of my life, like, you know, I've been a, a Michigan fan and liked everything about Michigan, except on the recruiting side, I wasn't aware of just the, uh, the emotion and the game inside of the game. And when it comes down to recruiting and it really takes, I don't want to say it takes a special kind of fan or a special kind of person, but it really is wild recruiting because you, you've, it's, it's so emotional and it's, you never really know what's going to happen. It's predictable at some points and then it gets wild and unpredictable, these twists and turns. And I think that's the attraction for a lot of people. I, I know that it keeps you, you know, monitoring your team in the off season. There's only three, four months during the season. And then you get to the off season. It's a way to stay connected with the fans and everything else. And, you know, the love of your team and everything, but man, it's got a real love hate type uh, aspect to it, man. You, you get in, you can feel great about the future of your team with just one commitment from some kid who, you know, people are talking about it's the greatest thing ever. And then it goes the other way on a turn of a dime and it feels like everything's falling apart. So uh, that's, uh, you know, kind of where we're at here today. And, uh, you know, the, the flips and the possibility of Michigan potentially going to the transfer portal to be able to get quarterbacks. You know, the, 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 the way you want to do it, Right now here in 2022, and you know, we'll talk about, you know, the, the best laid plans and what you would like with a football team and everything else. But the thing here for me is that Michigan, you know, was in on Dante Moore. They wanted him since he's been in seventh grade. And, you know, they were just all about him. They, they've been focusing on him for the, for years now. And then it's come to this and then they've missed. So it is a huge miss. There's no, like, uh, I'm not here telling you, like, hey, let's just turn the page. It's on to somebody else. Uh, Michigan's fine. Michigan's great. Michigan's got everything going. I'll look at kind of both sides of the ledger. Uh, I, I don't think today, you know, is uh, in this weekend or when it ultimately happens, the way it looks like it's going to happen, that, you know, that it's a, it's not a good day for Michigan. It's a, it's a big miss. So, you know, I, I, I'm not avoiding that aspect of it. It does play into the new days of college football here in the last year, which we've all been interested in name, image, and likeness, how different schools have approached it, how the coaches have sold it, how uh, publicly it has been presented by each university. And Jim Harbaugh, this late spring and summer, has uh, made it clear for Michigan that Michigan's not going out promising anybody any money. He has uh, talked about a disdain for salary caps and that it's uh, Michigan's transformative, not transactional. And when I first heard that, I thought, this is, okay, so this is uh, Harbaugh's Hill. I don't like it. But then I thought, well, maybe Harbaugh's saying one thing, and meanwhile, behind the scenes, everybody's doing everything different, and, and which would be fine. But a lot of it was going to have to do with this particular recruiting class, and specifically the quarterbacks from this class and Michigan was just in on one and it was Dante Moore. And today it looks like he's gone. So it doesn't mean that Michigan doesn't know what they're doing with name, image, and likeness. It doesn't mean that they're missing the boat with name, image, and likeness. If they would have got Dante Moore, like if I was sitting here saying, Oh, Dante Moore, it would have answered the question about if Michigan's, you know, got their P's and Q's or that they've got their ducks in a row when it came down to name, image, and likeness, if they were getting Dante Moore. But since they didn't, that question and Harbaugh's approach is fair to wonder if Michigan is just going to be, you know, if you're going to have to. I don't, I don't think this year, this year Michigan looks really good. But in the following years, can Michigan, can they afford a wobble of one year to kind of see, you know, how the lay of the land is going with name, image, and likeness before they really get everything in place and then go after it and say, hey, we're going to be left behind, you know, if we don't crank things up like the rest of the schools. And, and then there's always the chance that maybe they are cranking things up. I mean, it's a weird, it's weird, isn't it? It's weird to me. It comes down to this for me with players getting paid right now with name, image, and likeness. 
And I, I think that on the surface of things, like I told you a month ago, I didn't like Harbaugh's approach about unless he was playing chess when everybody else was playing checkers, saying one thing and behind the scenes, Michigan was doing other things. But here's what it comes down. I mean, you know, like, you know, Harbaugh was talking about, well, what if player X is getting a million dollars? That's going to hurt team chemistry and everything else. I'm going to tell you, like, I'm not an 18 year old kid anymore, but you know what I know from, from teenagers right now that follow sports, they know salary caps. They know odds. They know average, you know, length and term for year contract ins and outs, salary, you know, they, they know all of that way more than anybody from my generation knew. And you know, the other thing that they know about football, they know that it is a gladiator sport, that it is the most brutal sport and that everything can end in one hit and your career can be done. You can be mad. I mean, it is just, that is the, the, the game. And for years you'd hear, you know, guys in the NFL, you'd say, man, baseball, you know, they get these hundred million dollar contracts and they're all guaranteed. And look at football. Man, this is such a business. These guys are playing this gladiator sport. One in, knee injury, and you're out. You're caught. You're not getting any of that money. And football players, they're all saying, man, you got to get what you can get while you can get it. And this is where it comes down where now that there's name, image, and likeness money. And, you know, I'll say that to me, this is one of the biggest things in for high school recruits right now that can get money from teams with name, image, and likeness. When you talk about NFL deals over the last 10 years, you say, oh, so-and-so is getting $250 million. The very next thing that was said is that doesn't really mean anything because they can cut you at any time. It's all about the guaranteed money. I mean, we have heard that a million times over the last 10 years. What's the guaranteed money? How much are the guarantees? What are they getting up front? And so the part about, (laughs) here's the whole thing with college football. It's supposed to be like, well, you just can't promise anybody guaranteed money. That's the only rule. You can't promise him money. Well, if Jim Harbaugh or any coach brings a guy in there, he can't say, hey, I'm going to promise you a million dollars. But you know what? He can walk out of the room and I could come in there and say, hey, you know what? I can't say that I'm promising you this, but if you come here, I am promising you this million dollars. That's how easy it is. That's what teams are doing. So by Michigan taking their approach and coming out, this is Michigan. And and, and maybe – It's not all said and done. It just feels like it right now because this recruiting class was going to be very telling about name, image, and likeness because it's really the first one. And the quarterback specifically, they're getting the big money, and Michigan was just in on one, and the guys ending to Oregon are going to Oregon. So this is the the situation that we're in right now. I can can be proven wrong, but and, and Michigan can be proven right in all of it. And it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, that more was everything, but it, it it's it's what Michigan wanted. It's what they were going after. It was a test case and all of it. So it's a pretty big deal. These kids, they want everything. Sure, they want a, a, transforma- a transformative experience, but they also want a couple million dollars if somebody's guaranteeing it to them. And that's life. And Michigan, I know the Michigan experience, great academics, you know, it can mean everything. They're alum. What a great place. It really is. But you're going there so you can pick what you want to do with your lot in life and improve it and make as much money as you can. Other places are saying, yeah, you can do all that. Plus, we'll offer you a a million and two up front. And Michigan's saying, hey, we're offering you all this and you have a chance to make uh, maybe six figures. Or maybe, I don't know what their sales pitch is. That's what the sales pitch feels like to me. School A is saying, you can do all these things, the college experience, you can come in here, you know, play in front of all these different fans, and we're going to give you $3 million. And Michigan's saying, we are not offering, we are not offering you money up front. We are not getting into the transaction business. We are not, you guys are not employees. We want you to really enjoy the college experience. And hey, when you come in here, you know, you can get 2%, 10%. On, uh, uh, you know, some T-shirts that you sell or whatever. I mean, that's how it feels. And they're going to have to change quickly after this. And look, I like Jared Wangler. I've interviewed him twice here. You know, the he, he runs uh, Valiant. The first time he came on, you know, he was, we got some big things in store. And and for him, I think they were big. You know, he's involved in, you know, with you know, his Michigan grad. His dad played there and everything else. He felt really good about what Michigan was doing. Even got an award and everything else. But I will remember the first time I interviewed him, he said, Michigan's not 
offering, you know, a kid a Porsche, you know, to come to school. That's not what it's about. Well, by the next time I talked to him, I was saying, hey, Michigan's interior offensive linemen were, were driving around in a Lamborghini. Guy ended up being a, a, a Michigan grad, you know, that's, you know, throwing the keys over to Trevor Keegan and Zach Zinter so they can have a, a, a Lambo. That changed pretty quickly. It is about that. If you can experience college and you can drive around in a Lamborghini and somebody's offering you six, seven figures, I mean, what are we talking about here? So maybe Harbaugh and Michigan have missed the boat. Maybe they haven't, but this is a, I don't know what they say, flashpoint, fulcrum, all these watershed moments. All of these things feel like uh, it's going on. And believe me, I feel like, um, uh, you know, I'm getting really heated and talking about it and everything else. And, and then it will settle down and yeah, everything will be okay. But, you know, at this point here today, it doesn't feel all that great when it comes down to it. Let's take some of the feedback here. Antoine's at the point with Dante. If he comes, if he doesn't, we don't need to focus. Uh, wait, we need to focus on the other recruits. Well, yeah, he's gone, Antoine. I mean, like, and Michigan doesn't have, they, they went all in. They put all of their eggs in the Dante Moore basket. It's, here's the thing to me, um, Antoine. Here's why it sucks. He's a local kid from Detroit. The kid was a five-star. They had been recruiting him since the seventh grade. They went all on him more than a, a kid in, in CJ Carr. They picked this kid over Carr. And now they lost out on both of them. It also sucks because Michigan just won the Big Ten and you're expecting a little bump in recruiting. And instead, it's gone the other way. And I don't know if that's name, image, and likeness. I don't know if it's because Harbaugh flirted with the NFL. I don't know if, you know, maybe uh, Michigan still has something tucked away that they're ready to explode onto the scene with name, image, and likeness because it is still relatively early or now it's at least a halftime in the recruiting game. But this was the one that they had to have. If they were going to get Dante Moore, you could say, okay, you know what, Michigan, you really have to apologize to him because things weren't looking all that good. But, oh, you really got to hand it to him. Michigan really knew what they were doing here, and now it looks like they don't. And, yeah, I know it happens. But when you go all in on a local five-star that you maybe pass over for uh, a, a legacy kid and you've been on him since the kid's been, you know, 10 years old and you're just coming off going to the college football championship, and yeah, you know what? Michigan is not lighting it up on the recruiting trail right now, if you haven't noticed. And it sucks that they lost out on C.J. Carr. And it sucks because there are a lot of questions with Michigan and their NIL approach, and they would have been answered. It didn't mean that they still can't be answered. It just sucked that, um, you know, that, it, that it's gone like this. All right, let's get to some more feedback. Uh, Antoine coming back. We got a little uh, feedback on feedback crime, which is okay. You know, people are, I'm hot. Antoine saying they've recruited him since he was in high school. Recruiting is like dating. If I offer you to marry me and you're still looking for other dudes, then it must be something about me. Ooh, the, the dating analogy. Yeah, they've had, but they've had their eyes on Dante. They've had hearts for Dante forever. And now Dante's going to the prom with somebody else. Yeah, Antoine, when you put it like that, that's not helping me feel any better about the situation. Not like dating, Trepa says. Choosing a restaurant to eat in New York City. Well, let me, let me look. Michigan is, or you have been thinking about going to this restaurant for four years. It's got a Michelin rating. It's got uh, some of those other ratings. Jim Jim Smith, or I don't know, whoever the other guy is. And you've been on a waiting list for two years. And you get there, and you stand in line, and you get to the front, and they turn around the sign, and it says, sorry, we're closed, out of business. And next door, you got to go to a Coney Island. It kind of feels like that. I don't know. I like I like analogies. I'm playing along with them. 
Antoine. Let's see if, what else he's got. It is just like a marriage. Getting recruits, they can hit the transfer portal, a.k.a. a divorce. Having no fault, divorce. I just want to leave because I am not happy. Let's go to Wesley. Michigan always says somebody is getting paid. Maybe they just suck as recruiters. You know, Wesley, it's a, it's a fair point. Look, and let me uh, – I'll, I'll address it. I, over the last couple of years, not last year, but the previous couple of years, you know, Michigan got Harbaugh and, you know, it was a grand slam hire. And, and I thought, you know, the, the sky was the limit for Michigan. Harbaugh had done some things with um, signing with the stars, trips around the world, all this uh, satellite camps. I don't know. It's all great stuff. This is how he's going to try to win on the recruiting trail. And the thing is, is that, you know, again, it was walking like a duck. It was quacking like a duck. And it was a duck. You know, in the 21st century, I really since Michigan won their last championship 25 years ago, whatever it was now, every team that's been in the, the championship game, whether it was BCS or the college football championship game, all those teams you would look at and you'd say, oh, yeah, all those SEC teams are paying kids. Oh, the USC, of course. Texas, yes. All of them. Maybe not Notre Dame. Maybe you could say one. I think reasonable college football fans that have watched the game, could look at all of the teams that have won championships that have been in the championship game in the 21st century and say, yeah, all of those teams, they're paying players. At the same time, you could say, I think all of those fans of the game would say, nobody cares. They should be getting paid. Oh, so why didn't Michigan get in there? Well, Michigan decided that was their hill. They weren't going to go there. And you could say that Michigan got it wrong because look at, and today's maybe not the day to bring up the Supreme Court, but the Supreme Court voted unanimously with all the people that said that the players should be getting paid. They said, pay them. And now you can pay them. And it's only very small little move to say, hey, we're guaranteeing it rather than saying, hey, this is going to be transactional. Very small. You just say, look, you can be a coach and sit the guy down. You don't have to hand him, slide him any briefcase or say, hey, we're going to give your pastor a million dollars uh, once removed and, and, you know, paper sacks. You don't have to do any of that. Just look a kid in the eye and say, look, we're going to give you $3 million. You just can't say that we gave you the $3 million to come here, but we're giving you $3 million. That's it. And so, I, I, you know, Wesley, for me, I've looked at it like this. I, I reduced my expectations for Michigan because I didn't. They, they there was the hill. They they didn't want to get involved in that, and it appears that they still they're going to say no. Guys want to come in. We're going to let them do a lot of different things, but we're not going to promise you the money. I, I, I think that's a losing stance if that's the way it's going. That's the way it looks. And and Dante Moore was going to be a big test case. So is this recruiting class. It looks like a losing approach to me. I think you should just um, temper your expectations for Michigan. And, and, you know, you can say, well, it's an excuse or a reason, whichever you want to say. And, you know, I was worked in Ann Arbor for 11 years, and then I was away for 14 years, and then I came back for two. And when I came back, everybody's like, I was like, man, Michigan losing to Ohio State. You know, how are you guys taking it? They just took it like, well, Ohio State cheats. Ohio State's a bunch of fat cheaters. And so is everybody else that wins. That sounds like an excuse. Well, why doesn't Michigan cheat? Well, they're not, you know, Michigan's above that. And now we're getting to the point where it's actually legal to give them money and Michigan's still like, no, but yeah, but we're not, we're not crossing into the gray areas. All right. Because that's been the hill that they've been on forever. So I don't know how they get past that. And maybe they got some things behind the scene. And maybe, Wesley, this loss, maybe, of getting Dante Moore, maybe this will, you know, send the fan base and the collective into, we better do something. I know this, and I predicted this. You can go back and watch any of these shows. I predicted that Michigan, if they lost out on Dante Moore and C.J. Carr and they didn't have a top 25 uh, class this year that people were going to go crazy and that, you know, they were going to be forced into the gray area of the name image and likeness. And that may happen. Now, can they afford a year of, you know, saying, well, we were, we were going to play it the way we thought 
and we watched everybody else, you know, going hog wild and doing Louisville, getting top 100s, everybody else paying out the cash. And, you know, Michigan was going to stand by and, you know, maybe, I don't know, this sounds like a worst case scenario because it is, you know, Michigan ends up, you know, with a 31st recruiting class after next year, Michigan fans, they're going to go crazy. And it's going to force them into uh, an NIL situation. How soon will Dante announce? That is a feedback from Trepa. You know, he's not really saying that it's nailed down Trepa, but it's kind of connecting the dots a little bit. Arch Manning was the highest recruit, and now all of the five stars for next year are off the board. Dante's the only one. And then Dante is going out to the Elite 11 next week, but he's making a stop at Oregon. Oregon is how I used to always like to say, Oregon. And he was supposed to also, which may or may not happen, Michigan's trying to say, hey, go out to Oregon, but maybe you should stop here first. It feels like he's going out to Oregon to commit. It feels like Phil Knight is saying, look, I'm not going to promise you anything, but every game that you play for the uh, for the Ducks, I'm going to give you a hundred thousand. I'm not going to promise you everything, but you're going to get a hundred thousand for every game that you suit up for. You're going to get two hundred fifty thousand for every game you start in your career at Oregon. Oh yeah, and we're going to give you a million on top of that, and and plaster your all on the boards out here in Eugene, and uh, you know this this is going to be worth five million dollars if you stay here for two three years. I don't know. I'm guessing. But I've seen Phil Knight before. I've seen Phil Knight's NIL before this. And now that it's legal, you can make somebody a millionaire overnight. That's going to be hard to compete with. Michigan's trying. But I don't know what exactly Michigan's pitch is. Dante's like, Texas A&M's offering me $3 million. Oregon's offering me $4 million. Michigan's offering me an opportunity. You know, to, to uh, you know, to make some some money off my T-shirts. I don't know. Like that's what it feels like. And I know they got a lot of other things in the works, and I got some collectives going. So we haven't actually had uh, an announcement date. All right. Uh, that's all the negative side, and that's me crying and screaming. And I was only going to go for five minutes, and here I did it for like twenty-seven minutes. Michigan could be okay. If they land Jaden Davis or Julian Sand, those are not quarterbacks for this upcoming recruiting class. That's the following year. Kids that were sophomores that are going to be juniors in high school now. Like that could be like because Michigan have has both Cade McNamara and J.J. McCarthy. And those guys really are only sophomore status, even though Cade McNamara seems like he's been around for three years because he has. He redshirted and he gets a uh, pandemic year. He could actually start for three more years for Michigan, which is amazing. Same thing with McCarthy. Nobody thinks that's going to happen, but so they could be okay. And in a year's time, if they ended up getting Jaden Davis or Davis said, he's going to announce after his, um, he's going to whittle it down during the season and after. So what are we talking about? November, maybe he's going to make his announcement. That's a long time, a whole year. And he's from the South that George is going to be, you know, uh, talking them up and offering them everything else. And Sands from California, that's a hell of a long time to wait. But it could be okay in the long run if they ended up getting Like, if you told me today, look, Michigan's going to ultimately end up with Jaden Davis. And it's going to work out. <laughs> and, you know, he'll be the quarterback. McCarthy or McNamara, however you think that's going to work out this year. And, you know, the, one of those two guys will be the quarterback next year. And then you're sitting over there and you can say, you've got the transfer portal and then you got Jaden Davis. So it could be okay. The other thing, you know, where it could be okay is, you know, Michigan really does have something big with their name, image, and likeness going. That Harbaugh is saying one thing and yet behind the scenes, they're doing another thing. That they're ready to spring something in the manner of, traveling the world, signing with the star, satellite t- camps, but uh, name, image, and likeness. that none of these other teams have seen or have tried doing. Michigan's going to spring it on everybody. And they're like, whoa, could happen. 
I don't, I don't feel like that's going to happen right now, and I'm not predicting that. There are some people that are. I am not. Could be okay if Michigan has to go to the transfer portal. I mean, transfer portal, I don't know, if we went back to um, Trepa, no, it's, it's Antoine's analogy of, of dating. Transfer portal is like meeting somebody online. Hey, it works for every, It's I know a lot of people that have met online and it works great. Now, I like the old fashioned way of going to a bar, getting slapped in the face or getting a drink, you know, poured on you. But hey, it's 2022, the transfer portal is viable and it works. There's also the potential, like I mentioned, it's a long ways away for Jaden Davis. It's still a long ways away for Carr and more. Dante Moore might think he wants to transfer or he might want to, he might want to go to Oregon, but once he gets out there and, and he has to fly to Seattle and then take a, 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 a puddle jumper, you know, into Eugene. And, you know, after a while it takes eight hours and his parents are flying commercial and they got to drive from Seattle to Eugene. And like, they're never going to see him. And he gets out there. He's like, you know what? I'm out of here. West coast is great and everything. If you're going to stay out there, but not if you want to come back. So, you know, they could flip Dante Moore. They could flip uh, C.J. Carr. Hard to predict that. It's hard, especially when these guys, one of them just committed, and one seems like he's just going to, saying that they're going to flip him. Michigan also has uh, indicated, at least uh, Mason Blue Review has indicated, that they're still going to be in on a quarterback this year, and it's not going to be a five-star. It might not even be a four-star, but – you know, they might have a diamond in the rough. Hell, they've had Alex Orgy and Jaden Denegal on the, the squad this year. Maybe one of those guys turns out to be awesome. Maybe uh, what's-his-face that played in the spring game, Davis Warren, who's working out with the renowned quarterback guru, Tom House. Maybe, uh, you know, Davis is his diamond in the rough. So Michigan could be okay if one of those guys come up big. They could also be okay if over the next couple of days, weeks, and months, they start pulling in a bunch of stars on the recruiting trail. You, for, you can forget about Dante Moore, and you start feeling like, hey, Michigan's got something going here. But, you know, we'll see. Antoine on the feedback says, this is why I was excited to hear Michigan possibly adjusting its offensive plays because you don't necessarily need a top-flight quarterback to run a West Coast offense. Just be accurate and smart. Smart. Yeah, I don't know. You, I think you want whatever kind of offense you're running. You want the best quarterback that you can get, Antoine. I think. All right, let's make the transition to basketball. Last night, NBA draft. Caleb Houston, second pick in the second round, goes 32 overall to the Orlando Magic. Hunter Dickinson tweets out the Orlando Wolverines. Good one. Hunter, it is. You got uh, all the you got the Wagner brothers there and Iggy. You know, it is the Orlando Wolverines. That is pretty cool. As much as I've worked in sports my entire life, and then I like watching the NBA draft, I didn't realize that a second round pick was able to get guaranteed money like they have been for the last few years. I thought like they get some kind of two-way contract and they do pretty good if they are in the NBA, but you know, G league, they might end up only making like 40 or 50 grand, something like that. But that's not the case. Caleb Houston. And if you knew this, I mean, you, you knew more than I did. The last two years, the 32nd pick got an average of over 4 million guaranteed. Caleb Houston can expect to get over $4 million guaranteed. And I was sitting here like a lot of other people, like, this kid's not getting drafted in the first round. So what? Four million. And he's a second rounder. And he was a disappointment, mostly, at Michigan. A disappointment to a guaranteed four million. Not too shabby for Caleb. Later on in the second round, Musa Diabati goes 13th. In the second round, number 43 overall to the Clippers. In the last two years, the 43 slot has gotten $2.5 million guaranteed. Now, it's not a guarantee that he get a guarantee, but it's close to a guarantee. 
he can expect to get two and a half million dollars guaranteed. And here's the thing: you can say, "Well, he could have gone back to Michigan. He could have been a lottery pick. Yeah, maybe he could have been. Maybe he could have got himself into the first round." But the NIL, remember, the Abadis from France, Houston's from uh, Canada. Those guys weren't getting NIL deals, and you know. It's okay when nobody's getting paid on the team or, you know, however, I, I don't think Michigan actually, I don't, I don't think since the Ed Martin, I don't, I don't think that any of the, I don't think Jawan Howard or anybody attached with Michigan booster or anything is paying players previous to the NIL to come to Michigan. So with nobody getting paid, you know, and everybody's like, okay, but last year with other guys like, Hey, we can pay for your dinner and you guys, we can't because you're foreigners. I mean, I, that I, I could see why they jumped. And then, hey, you're probably going to be like, I didn't think they were going to get picked in the first round, but I thought that they were going to p- get picked in the second round. And when you're saying, hey, you know what? You can get two, three, four million dollars guaranteed. You can do that or you can go back to Michigan. While uh, while Hunter Dickinson's, uh, you know, eating down on State Street, you know, you got to go to, you know, Big Ten Burrito and he can't pay for it. Like, all right. But good luck to those guys. All right, finally, Antoine says Warren's looking good in the spring game. He surprised me. He had to sit out because of his illness. You're right. Antoine's saying hopefully Houston does good. I don't think he's ready for the NBA. I was surprised someone drafted him, to be honest. He had a bad collegiate career and needed more development. Yeah, well, it's it's uh, it's about upside. You know, if you're young – and you're highly rated, and you got some upside. And these guys both, for sure, they have upside. Like Caleb Houston, you watch him shoot, you watch the ball, and you're like, it just didn't go in. But you're like, wow, that was a really nice-looking shot. But how many times when you watched a guy last night, and they said, oh, look at every year, his three-point three point percentage went way up. And the NBA is a game right now of wings, that can fire from downtown. And that's what Caleb Houston is. No, he doesn't have a step back. No, he couldn't make a, a shot this year in big time games. No, he uh, didn't seem like he played with much fire. No, he would have been on a bench uh, if Michigan had a, you know, a legit option to replace him. But, and Diabati, you know, uh, the, you watch him four or five times, you're like, man, this guy looks like a pro. All right, the Pistons, let's get to them quickly. They get uh, Jaden Ivey, falls to him at five, thanks to Sacramento. I mean, this is could have gone any better for the uh, Pistons. And then they're able to, with the night before, making their deal with Portland, they're able to use the uh, the cap space, and they're able to parlay this into a big man and getting Jalen Duran, uh, A-plus for Troy Weaver and company. And I got to say, looking at uh, Jay Ivey and looking at his uh, Twitter page, some things that I did not know about Mr. Ivy, Poison Ivy. I get it. Once had a connection with a, a girl online who called herself Poison Ivy. All right, let's see. Jaden Ivy is the part I like. Here it is. This is a pinned tweet from Jaden. Grandpa, I did it, man. I know you upstairs smiling right now. This is for you. R.I.P. Grandpa. Kid was emotional to begin with, was up there. And you love it. I know Malika Andrews uh, was criticized, and she she uh, she said this is what it's all about, like 100 times within the first five picks, but it was her first time up there. But James Hunter, if you're old enough, like me, you remember – Jaden Ivey's grandpa, James Hunter. What I remember most about James Hunter, him along with, um, what was the guy's name? Spider-Man Allen. The Lions went uh, two and 14. I know, hard to believe. Only had two wins. They really sucked. Everybody was screaming about the ownership and talking about how terrible they were. You know, I know that you find that hard to believe. But James Hunter helped. Spider-Man Allen sing a song to Queens. Another one bites the dust. And the song went somewhat like last year we were two and 14, but this is the year for new Orleans. 
I don't know if that necessarily rhymes when I said it, but when they did it, it did rhyme. Spider-Man sitting on his seat with his head hanging down low. Ain't no sound but the sound of cleats. Detroit Lions are ready to go. Song was somewhat like that, and I believe James Hunter was involved in that. And I can remember this football card myself from James Hunter, corner from the Detroit Lions. I don't know who Kate Newton is, but she is seen pictured here in the photo that I have up with Jaden Ivey. Jaden Ivey's a good-looking dude. Let's get a close-up. Get a close-up. Uh, let's see if I can do a little bit better than that. Oh, well, there's his, uh, I'm guessing his mom and dad. Good-looking guy. Uh, let's take this down a little bit. There we go. Now I'm cooking. I can just scroll through the photos. There it is. I don't know. I, I'm guessing. I'm going to guess his girlfriend, but I don't know. Good guess, bad guess. I don't know. All right, Antoine. Troy Weaver is a genius. I love the Duran pick. Detroit's defense will be crazy with him. The man is a human fly swatter, and he has a lot of upside offensively. Dude is a, uh, I agree with you. I gave uh, Pistons an A+. Plus. Weaver's awesome. The deal for Grant, which I was skeptical about, being able to work New York the way they did, have the cap space available there, and then get Duran. And, yeah, Duran is a, uh, he is a man-child. The sky's the limit for him. I mean, anything around the basket, he's going to dunk. Strength. I like it. I like the pick. I like the draft. It was awesome. I want everybody to have a great weekend. I'll be here Monday. Thanks for watching. Thanks for contributing. And thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.